All right. So confusing the security token. All right. So let's start. So my name is Alt. I think I know all of you uh, in this room. Uh, so um, I started uh, MySQL uh, 2006, and I uh, worked at uh, Sun, Oracle, Percona. I joined Amazon Web Services, RDS, Relational Database as a Service, uh, about three years ago. And uh, I uh, created a new team, uh, Red Team, which is doing the um, uh, pen testing and security research. So I'll probably need my glasses to see you better. All right, so this is um, what we will be talking about, the confused deputy problem. So what is confused deputy? According to Wikipedia, a confused deputy is a program, right? It's a program that runs with a more privilege. And uh, another process, another program, basically tricks this new, this is more privileged program to execute something on your behalf. So Linux OS have this. It has the confused deputy problem. And I will start by demonstrating how it works on the Linux. Imagine a situation where you have an unprivileged user, let's say easy to use, but and we want to make absolutely sure that all files and directory inside of that user belongs to itself, right? It makes sense if you have something in there. And then to make that absolutely sure, we created a cron job. What it does is it finds all the files inside of this user home directory and execute churn command. Right? That makes sense. The question is, what can go wrong? And to demonstrate it, again, this is a confused deputy problem for um, uh, databases. I have recorded this uh, screencast. So on one side here, we have a, a root user. And we want to, we created this, um, uh, basically we created this file inside of the EC2 user directory, right? It's now it's owned by root. But we have this cron job, and the cron job will fire in about a minute. So the cron job will fix everything. It is supposed to write, um, write like this, right? So then in a second, we'll see that it will fix it. Now it's fixed. Now our bad actor, our hacker, is on the other side of the screen. What they will do is they will create a symlink. And they will create a symlink to ETC password. You can create a symlink to the file that you don't have an access to, any file. And then what will happen is that our cron job will run and it will execute the churn command. And then when it, it will execute the churn command, now the ETC password is owned by our EC2 user, unprivileged user. So this user will be able to edit this password. Right? In a second, we'll see that it is, will be owned by EC2 user. So what happened here is we used the confused deputy call. We confused the high privilege user, root user, to execute something on our behalf without it knowing that it's doing bad thing. So now, EC2 user can actually edit the ETC password and create another root user or do something else. Then what happens is that EC2 user now has achieved the privilege escalation. Now, EC2 user is basically a root because they created this, so they, they added the ETC password file. 
Make sense? So this is, in essence, a confused deputy pro. So let's take a look how it works for the databases. In the databases, you have an unprivileged user access. And then you have a super user access, a root user access. And we trust the security boundaries provided by the database. The user has specific privileges, and they cannot do certain things they are not allowed to do. So let's look at this case study, a confused deputy example for my ADB or my SQL. So let's take a look at this sample architecture. In this sample architecture, we have a customer, right? Uh, whatever, a user. And they, they, let's say we have a big company. And this big company have the database of health records, which is supposed to be very protected. And then this company also need to have a WordPress website. So what they did is they created a WordPress database on the same database instance, MariaDB database instance, <laughs> where the health records database is. And imagine we have this hacker, and they use SQL injection or tons of other issues in the WordPress to get an access to the WordPress database. The question is, can they get into the health records database? Because WordPress is not interesting. There is nothing there. There is a static database. So basically, what we want to do is a pen tester, right? We want to see if we can trust the security boundaries provided by the data. First of all, what we'll need to see is what kind of users are provisioned here. So we can see there's an admin user, which has every, everything there. We have a WordPress user, which has all and every privilege on its own database, on its own schema. Right? And we have also a health data service user, which is also isolated. It has some privileges on the health records database. But now we also have the monitor user. So what is this? Let's take a look at the grains. So we have WordPress database, all privileges, isolated. WordPress user cannot select from health data service, can also cannot select from the MySQL database. But now we have this monitor, and this monitor has a global select. We also have the execute privileges. Right? This doesn't, this is a read-only user. They cannot even write. So can we use that user and confuse it to give us an access to the healthcare database? So this is what we will try to do. Right? So if we connect as a WordPress user, yes, let's verify. We'll see that the select from the mysql.user database will not be possible, right? ECL <laughs> protects us. But if we connect from the mysql uh, monitoring, the monitor user that we have created, um, and this monitor user can be any monitoring program. It can be PMM, it can be RedWire, or it can be anything. So we can see that because it has a global select, it can retrieve the username, host, and password for, the, for any user. So database performance monitoring, we all know what it does, right? It collects database metrics, slow queries. And database administrators usually use this. And what they're interested in, uh, the majority of the DBAs are interested in slow queries. And what they do is they collect the slow queries and they run explain on the slow query. So we take a slow query, we run explain, and the question is, it will not re-execute the select again, right? Do you all agree? Anyone have a different opinion on that? So actually, 
In some cases, it can re-execute the query. So not really can it execute part of the arguments. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you, all of you, have you ever thought before, before you learned it today or yesterday that I shared that, have you ever thought about that explain can actually in some cases execute part of the query? Yes, you can. One. Why should we care about it? Here we go. Why do we care about it, okay. right? Okay. So let me explain. This is the blog. <laughs> 2020, uh, Peter, actually we spoke with, I spoke to Peter about this, and uh, Peter published this blog post. Uh, he called it Uncommon Sense Minus Kill. You never expect it, but if you run query like this, what will happen is this part, the select sleep part, will be executed during the explain plan. And if you run the explain like this, it will hang forever. Well, 5,000 seconds, that's forever, right? So it will materialize this to be able to, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to be able to give you the estimate. So this is my SQL bug that has been created. And I raised a concern in 2020 about that this is dangerous because imagine someone creates a function, the cleanup function, which will do the delete, and then database administrator will run explain and then accidentally deletes this. Okay? So, and then when I was creating this presentation, one second, uh, when I create this presentation, I was thinking, will it work on MariaDB? I uh, checked it out. This is older version of MariaDB, but work on the later version. It does. So it actually works on MariaDB as well. <laughs> so let me explain how we can use that, and then we will go through the function and uh, uh, what it does. So how do we escalate the privilege? Let's say I am impersonating a, a hacker, right? A bad hacker. What can I do? So again, the attacker can create tables in its own database. What I can do here is I can create an exploit function. This exploit function using SQL security invoker and this function selects the authentication string, the password, hash of the password, where user equals monitor. And then it actually checks the user. If the user is monitor, then it will do that. If the user is not monitor, it will just sleep to make this query be slow. And again, monitor and user has global select, so they can select from the MySQL to the user table. Now the question is, how do we pass the password back? We can select it, but this user, the monitoring user, cannot write anything, right? So read only. What I can do is I create my function, and this function has a definer, and it runs the SQL security. Definer, right? So that means that it will run as my function, it will run with my privileges. Now, deterministic part. It should not be deterministic. But I am a bad actor, right? I am a bad actor. But also, we have discussed it recently. What if someone will create that accidentally, the deterministic function, find the something on the internet? If you try to create a function and you omit the deterministic, non-deterministic, it will say you need to choose, right? So I create this function as deterministic, and then it will work. 
So let's create a proof of concept. The full function exploit function returns text. That is as SQL security invoker. So we assume that monitor user will run an explain plan on that. Then I will select password, hash on the password into a variable. And then pass that variable to the save function, which will run as a definer, my user, which can actually insert into my database. So then finally, I have created this uh, um, screen recording to demonstrate how it will work. So I have a bad actor on that side of the screen and my SQL DB on that side of the screen. So here, a bad actor will use the WordPress user and then it will create this, recreate this um, so procedures table, so there's nothing in this table, WordPress.p table, which has been created to store the password. And now it will run this select from subselect exploit. It will run this query, it will be slow, it will be 30 seconds or so. Three seconds in this case, doesn't matter. And then a MySQL DBA will find this query, or monitoring user will find this query, right? And then try to find out why it's slow. And then we'll run explain without thinking about this. Well, the exploit function will be something else. And then this is not a slow query. That's, hmm, that's confusing. That's our confused deputy scenario. And then we have the password because the password has been saved. This is the password for the monitoring user. So what we'll do next? Yeah, exactly. So here's a quick recap, right? We run the query, monitoring user ran this, and attacker got that. So now I need to correct this password. So I stored the most expensive GPU instance, EC2 instance in AWS. And then I run my hashcat and I will start with the Roku TXT, which is a list of most common passwords. I'm prepared to wait, but in reality, it's less than a second. Why? Because the password is actually fast. Why the password is fast? Because nobody thought about that. It's a really, really unprivileged read-only user. Some junior DBA has set up a monitoring system and used this path. So now I got my password and I have the full access. Right? So quick recap again. <laughs> we can use the monitoring system or the database administrator into running the explain. And MySQL explain can actually execute this, the statement. A monitoring user has global select and execute privilege. So, how do we fix this? Well, server side fix. I still think that it's a bug. There are lots of confusion about that. It's a confused deputy problem. Right? Uh, so, mm, but I still think that this is a bug. The client side. The, the whole thing happens because you have an execute privilege or monitor. If you revoke that execute privilege, then nothing happens. And then I mentioned PMM, so let's clear the PMM name. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at uh, the documentation, it will suggest you to create a user there is no execute here in this view. So this whole thing will not work. But the password that is supposed to, you're supposed to set is pass. This is not good. Uh, other than that, this, uh, this thing doesn't work. All right, so last recap, right? So we got monitoring user hash. 
It was a simple password, easy to crack. Someone copied pasted the great user from the internet. Uh, and <coughs> we broke the isolation. A bad actor used this confused deputy problem to confuse some monitoring system to get an access to the highly privileged and protected health records database. Just because some user has created this monitoring system and said the password is best. So that's it. In general, databases are complex. Lots of people are actually confused about that. People think that database is data. It's not true. Database is code. It's functions, stored procedures, triggers, events, that's all code. Right? And uh, explain plan, execute the statement, execute parts of the statement uh, to be precise, right? This is, this is unusual. To me, that's, I agree with Peter here, it's uncommon sense. And then beware of the confused deputy problem on the databases. And uh, do I trust the in-database security boundaries? No. The ACL works, but it doesn't mean that the, you want to place your WordPress database on a, on a database instance that holds the you know, credit card. Right? Don't do that. All right, that's all. Now, questions? Yes. Why this execute thing actually allows you to uh, execute from the user which has a wider access uh, rules than the user that involved. Because there's no checker against that. You have a global execute. You have an execute on everything. You have a, you, you do start dot start, right? That's, so this that's is the exactly thing. the back the, the back from the server side. Execute from the user. security. It's like, I don't know, you have a function calculate some checksum. Anybody can call it with invoke it with his own privileges and get checksum of whatever they have. It is common for function, you, you want anybody to execute, so you just tell them that. This is executed by your rights. So that, that it, if you don't have, if you're less privileges, it restricts you. In this case, they uh, check you to get more privileges. Yes, but is it, uh, is it the idea of uh, execute to give more privileges, like of pseudo? So that's that's exactly that. that. But right. the, problem is that, the problem is that you are trying to run some other person's program with, with higher things that you shouldn't do. Basically, if somebody gives you a script, can you please execute this as well? Would you do that? And that this is exactly the same thing. Well, this is I'm asking, why I'm asking this. Is it like so low or not? If it's, it's not, it's not some It's solid bit. It's solid bit. It's what is it? I agree then that this is about. It's more like set your ID, not so. Hmm? It's more like set your ID. Set your ID, yes. <laughs> It's not about, no, it's not that you need, if you have security defined, that's it, you need. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's right, you're, you're, you're right. 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 you if you have an execute, you can execute that. And when I define the privileges, I define the privilege for, for the healthcare database, I define and not global, but, but for the healthcare privilege database only. So you cannot execute this one if you are in the health, if you are a healthcare user. But a global select plus execute can do this. So this is the way how the pie uh, is able to retrieve, to actually save the problem, save the um, uh, password.
But even without this, this is interesting, right? SQL Security Invoker, whoever invokes this, the rights of that user will apply. So this thing will actually work just fine. Make sense? Of course, this is why it's strange. So. I, I think the root cause of that is because people don't expect that explain will execute the select query. <clears throat> people don't even expect that if you do select function, the function can write. So uh, I can explain what the select is doing, or actually explain is doing. Okay. So what happens is that we are trying to uh, create the exact plan as the user wants. So for example, example, for example, in the example of sleep, sleep is defined as a function that the third a constant. So we executed that constant to, to create a temporary table Mm -hmm. uh, with that where this actually is constant, so we can then do future uh, um, optimizations. But that means that we actually execute it because this is a constant. Otherwise, we would do uh, get the same plan. And that means that functions that are constants are uh, executed during explain to be able to provide the plan. And then the other, everything else follows from that. Right. What about between just console and the type of sleep? Because the problem is that it's because it was slow that the uh, uh, guy tried to run the explain. Yeah, but that's uh, why, why we have no uh, explaining. Explaining is already in the slow query box, so you don't need to do that. But also, what we, mean, one reason we have that. It's just one example of how it can work. Hmm. Uh, there may be other examples. That that's the confused deputy problem targeting the monitoring user. You may target another user, right? Um, and then basically, I think the main difference between the explain and something like, oh, execute this query for me, please. Dear administrator, execute this query for me. This is different because administrator or DBA will will think what is query why this user is asking to execute the query for me why they're not able to run it themselves but explain plan is different this is very well known situation where database administrator will run explain because they want to know what the you know the plan is yeah so are you making the assumption that you know, in every production environment, someone will just train or blindly execute something in production. No, but explain is different because... I understand your point, but like, I wouldn't run anything in production if I haven't passed in a task environment or anything that I can trust that what's been running there, it's been totally tested by me before I do anything in production. So, Oh, I, I get the point. I was just like, I don't trust the developer to ask me anything and run that in production. I just don't trust it. <laughs> <laughs> if I, if I say, that, and I, I did this production query, what's the asking point? I don't understand the standard explain. Can you explain it for me? And then you give me the query. Like, you it's it's oh, your yeah. production but system. It's that... the same in, in a test environment, like, for example, if they go there and pass in, in the test environment. You don't need to do that. Oh, can you? Uh, well, you're not going to like all right. Curl, curl, and curl, 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 they explain as the user. Yes. Yes. I, I think that's a good thing to do, but there's no ability to do that because you are a database administrator. You cannot do sudo easily in the database, enter your password, and get 
privilege escalation. What you will need to do is you will need to create a procedure and then it will use that procedure. If it would be documented, never run explain plan, but use this procedure to do that and all the tools since whatever has been using that approach, that will be different. But we, we should do that as a push, basically push to the, so that basically if you change that, you can, I, I, that doesn't have the right to. Yeah, yeah I know. No. But that could be, who would be trigger? But that would be trigger to do a script, uh, push, use a run temporary bump, and then could be well, push and push. But, but, but I, I want to point out one thing though. Different, there, there is a common understanding that there is a difference between explain and explain analyze. If you run explain analyze, it's everywhere documented that an explain analyze will execute the query again. But there is no documentation I know of that will talk about explain execute. execute. Yeah, but then you, you, you are jumping, jumping uh, the barrel. It will be tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> I'm very glad that my presentation will influence the, the decision. Uh, Why explain cannot be just safe and be done? It, it, should, it, should, it, should, it should not do that. But you have to execute the 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 deterministic to be able to <coughs> otherwise you can't get the plan. It shouldn't it shouldn't really be good plan to that person. You don't know that. I thought about that yesterday. If it requires yeah. uh, uh right load and the table then how what about sleep? Yeah. What about other functions? Yes. This is the that doesn't arrive on the table during the explain. Because the flag of life can actually be something that you generate some for I know. That you write as a side effect. Right as a side effect. Right as a side effect. You don't want to do that in this case. You are allowed to do that in this case. You are allowed to do that in this case. I'll share with you. Well, there's no explaining in the meantime. All right, question. Yes. From theoretical computer science and now about problems that cannot be solved regarding QRX halting halting problem. So you can't decide whether the system will ever solve it or not. And um, my question or what comes to my mind is, is this by principle, this whole confused um, density yep. problem, is this by principle a thing that can be said to be equivalent to the halting problem? Namely, I never can decide um, whether this um, explain um, gets a result um, or I cannot derive the result that this explain or whatever gives without actually executing at least parts of it. And uh, then this would be um, unsolvable by principle, this whole problem. This whole problem, there will always be situations where you can um, perform such uh, operations and run into this confused deputy problem. And is this the case? Or uh, can you say, can you make a distinction between confused deputy problems and problems regarding Turing's halting problem? I don't know. So explain uh, if drive to operate the nice information is possible, but do not execute certain parts of the query that it considers to be expensive in some Currently, we have the C definition of expense, and, but it does, the idea is that you don't want to explain for run for hours. You don't, so it already doesn't do something to explain to me, but so it can easily not execute some <coughs> functions that do some to your job. But, but I think you want to have, for example, I can easily see an example where you really want to write. Yeah, I've done it yes. in and, and I can easily have an example like you might want self select to be the curator and explain that to the type of that. I think that makes and sense. What, what you're saying. Show you why it checks item is expensive and all self select. Yeah, but that's not. Yes. So, I, and I definitely, as a user, I would think that this self select is not expensive. Why explain you explain the brand? They don't get it. Why explain? But explain doesn't do it. Oh. Whatever user want, so it's only to do that for for something that is a constant. Something like a lot of places. No, it doesn't execute. We just merge them all. Optimize them doesn't execute. 
I think this is a very good question. How do we distinguish between what is... The check for vitamin is expensive. I know. You've got a something for bad something. Not for everything. Well, anyway, the point is that in that kind of automatic decide if the function is deterministic or not. This is probably but it can still prevent functions from writing into table like this. Yeah, so you use that yeah, in, in test cases. <coughs> well, test cases are definitely the least of the Yeah, but that also practical thing. You maybe where you want to log in an example a table, how often is it will execute it? Yes, it's not but if it's not executed, then you don't want it. Yeah, but you need that sort of beauty. Then I expect. Probably a generic approach would be that explain should not execute any sort of function. But then, 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 then you don't get, uh, then you can see how your query will behave. Yes, exactly. But <coughs> also, it's like maybe I also introduce some variables like the log bin trust table, log bin trust function tables. Why would you do that? Do that? The query and the stop procedures is made for you and only for you. Somebody else is, is, is executing them at a higher privilege. It's their problem, not the user. We shouldn't blame the user. And then not blame no, no, I mean, of course, it's, it's not the user, but when, when you're executing it, you can have some, like, a variable that might as well doesn't allow you to execute. Uh, but we already have a privilege for that. Yes. Uh, the question why are you executing explain for somebody else? That's the first thing. You should always ex execute it, explain or anything. And then, his privilege is not yours. Monty, this is, this is what we have been doing since, I was doing since 2006 yeah. at my SQLAP, right? I go to the customers and I help them to troubleshoot this huge select query, which goes from here to the toilet. Yeah. If you print it, <coughs> and, I, and I want to know why this is slow. So I, I, I run that against the production system with my DBA account, which is read-only. I know what I'm doing. Some people are doing it as root because they didn't even think about this. I'm doing it with my read-only DBA account that I have created specifically for that purpose. This this hap this has been happening for twenty plus years. So that's Monty, that's exactly the point. So you can invent a hypothetical use case for some crazy user to want to write to table using explain, and you completely ignore the very common use case that people execute other people's queries under it, it, different uh, But uh, this is a standard SQL. Explain is not standard SQL. Well. They know, but the, the point is that. Uh, then just you did it explain it won't work for lots of users. No, explain will work pretty much for everyone does the same. No, not not you, you, you mean a hypothetical case when somebody wrote want to write to a table during explain. I have lots of cases of users uh, doing that. Yeah. But you the, the question is how do we distinguish between this sleep which is built in function and sleep two, which is a UDF? And sleep three, which is SQL, and sleep four, which is uh, PL SQL, whatever. Uh, well, between SQL and you, well, the server knows the difference between building function and UDF and third function. Right, you but want which? Do, you don't want to do sleep during explain. You explain is supposed to be fast. You don't want to do yeah, but how do we distinguish between what, what it is? It's so a, the, the yeah, you, you can, why, do you, why do you want to target sleep? Hmm? Why do you want to target sleep? There may be other because cases. Because specifically may explain slow and you don't want to explain too slow. I, I know, we can, we can do very specific things and target the known target. But what about other things? There are things like you can offload 
to S3. You can do connect storage engine. You can do yeah. other things. We need to have a huge list of exclusions now. We need to maintain that no. list. No? No, that, well, if it's a, if it's a UDF, the server doesn't, doesn't know what it's doing. You can have an UDF that keeps a bunch of speed. You cannot exactly. expect the server to... Uh, so what, what we, we, will, we will do in this case? If it's UDF, we will not execute it? If you, I think UDF is if you have a non deterministic function, it's also not computer. Right. Right. But then you, you, you are allowed to do that for all the users, not for the users who actually want it. You create it. Then you have to execute it. No. I have a question for you. How would I run the explain for this query without waiting in 5000 seconds? Oh, no, really, you don't see it. That's, uh, this. I and will I get the wrong property. This is item expensive property, just uh, for different. It doesn't work, it, it, it doesn't work for, it doesn't work, work for things that are in expression as opposed to It's defined by that. Well, uh, it's not for constant. What if I put no, sleep inside of my, my search card? If you an expression into constant, this is, well, I manipulate it or not. I would love to have some sort of flag, like optimizer hints or something like that. Mm -hmm. Comments. SQL comments. Mm -hmm. Like put, safe. Can we just put, put the list of functions you don't No, no, no. Safe. But Explain uh, safe. And then never materialize anything like this. Just but don't but materialize. But you also then, then, then get to explain that it's not true. Yes, but you, 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 you want to, to have it safe? Yes. Well, you, you want to have the safe version of explain. You put this even, safe. Even if, even, if it get, if it, even if it gets you the wrong information. The explain will never give you 100% true information because it's always an estimate. No, no. Explain will exactly give you the plan that you will get if you run the query. But if we... Under uh, these conditions. Uh, Under these conditions. We saw that many times. You run explain after a day and then it will give you completely no. different information compared to it what it was quite, before. No, no, it's question what will happen if you execute it now. If you, if, if, we, yeah, if you change something there, you will not get the same plan as if you would execute it now. But a system that doesn't change. But also there's another interesting uh, thinking. You have now the explain for connection. You can specify a connection ID, you can do a short process this. And then you, you want to understand, do I kill this query right now? Or do I wait? So I do explain for connection. But that's a different thing because that explain is already generated. So we, only, we, we, we don't okay. execute anything. That's it. That's it. But, um, yes. Um, from the theoretical point of view, if this explain targets something which is Turing complete, and in my understanding, this SQL with procedures and functions and sub syntax is Turing complete, uh, then I always run into this Turing halting problem situation where I cannot decide what this program will do um, and, uh, if I do not execute it. So I can either execute it and see what happens and are prone to this problem of attack, or I decide that explain does something completely synthetical, which does not execute the program, but works on some meta, a web meta layer, and makes some assumptions and is not Turing complete. Then I don't have the only problem situation. Yeah, okay. <coughs> Good point. What, what about saying that the reason is because we were able to read the MySQL table, the user table? Why not uh, enable reading the user table only if, uh, with the function that has a defiler? Uh, that, that's a very good uh, question. It's actually the old MySQL, whole MySQL privilege mm -hmm. model, where you cannot do partial revokes. That has been added to MySQL 8. Is it, is it a plan to do that in MariaDB, where it already exists? Can I do revoke to something that I don't grant, like global revoke. I want to revoke globally for for all the users. Yeah, that is a plan. There's a plan for that, right So, so that if you have a global revoke, and then you can basically say, I grant 
globally select on all and every databases except for MySQL data system database. There are still a lot of standards. Data you can get in the database in your Oh, you, can just, you can just have your like, okay. state. You can, you can just it. infiltrate the data, you're absolutely right. Uh, you, can, uh, you don't need to select hash, I did it as an example, but you can, you can retrieve the data using the same approach from the healthcare database directly. You don't need to retrieve the hash. It's just easier to get the hash, try to hack it, to try to get the actual password and connect directly. But if you don't have that ability, you can change this um, function, right? This function, the same function, right, already exists. Instead of selecting authentication stream from MySQL user, you can do select uh, whatever, right? Uh, credit card from the table and you have the ability to retain the metadata from information schema as well. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Any other questions? I'm really glad I presented it today because it sparked the discussion and I think uh, we will finally be able to do something about it. It's a uh, Thank you very much. Thank you.